playing it in to Jamie Dyer. Jamie Dyer. Ball starts to go inside. Back to Terry Craig looking long. Wentworth. Stubbs. Up and off. Over Tammy Greenlaw. 24. Stubbs up. So they're putting it up early and often, but failing to connect for the Cougars. Back come the Central Rustic Panthers. Shaw with it. In the corner for the Allen. Pop, that's Angela Allen. 5'9", senior, number 20. Putting two more points on the board for the Panthers. Again, Rebound Stubbs on Stubbs. the board. Boy, she's battling hard in there. Kelly Stubbs, again, 21 points in the quarterfinal. And it's a one-point game with 6.42 on the clock. Central Rustic back. Shot in the corner by Allen. Missing. Rebound by Erica Shaw, giving it up to Story Shaw. Erica 14, Story 4. Inside spin around jump shot. It was up and good by Bradstreet. Nice move that time. Turn around, square it up, use glass. And it's a three-point lead now for the Panthers. Jimmy Dyer throwing the drive down inside. Rebound picked off by Central Rustic. Story Shaw to Eric Shaw. Inside, Melanie Clark puts it up, and gets the roll. Everybody getting in the action right now as uh, Central Rustic getting scoring from all their players. A lot of good fast action early in the morning. Up. Again, Stubbs with the rebound. Craig. Stubbs puts it back up and in. That's going to be a concern for Central Aroostic. Uh, Kelly Stubbs just able to uh, grab a bunch of boards right now. They're going to have to get somebody to box her out. 5.35 in the first period. <laughs> Melanie Clark moves in along the baseline, puts it off the glass. Good strong move by Clark that time. It's a five-point lead again for Central Aroostic. In the corner with it, Greenlaw wants timeout. The down by five. The number two team, Katahdin, playing number three Central Aroostic, and Aroostic, uh, Central Aroostic is off to a fast start. Yes, they're getting, as we said, they're getting scoring from a lot of their players. Uh, it's not one person you can shut down on the uh, on the Central Aroostic team. They've got the inside game and the outside, so it's tough to defend. Central Aroostic coached by Julie Bradstreet and uh, Cougars coached by Terry Duffy. 5.20 remaining in the first period. As we look into the Central Aroostic uh, huddle right now, I'm sure one of the concerns that we talked about is they need to keep Kelly Stubbs off the boards. Uh, she's scoring, rebounding at will right now. Stubbs at 5.8 is a real batter on the boards. One of these people who, I guess, again, one of these people plays, plays really taller than she is. Yeah, she's not that big a kid, but she, she's in the right place at the right time. And although she may miss some of her first shots, she battles very hard and uh, works for that second effort. Subs already has five rebounds, four offensive rebounds. And that's what we're talking about. If she misses that first shot, uh, she's right there to try to put in that second effort. Inside, Stubbs moves again, puts it up and in. Oh, they're but, calling uh, player control. Player control, so don't count it. Today's officials, Rich Nutter and Mike Worcester. Knocked out of bounds by Stubbs. Shaw tried to throw it down court. Stubbs bats it away. 507 left in the first period. That's a number of rebounds for. Oh, Cougar. nice quick pass that time. Shaw. And it's tied up, and let's see who gets the arrows. Possession goes to Katana. Five rebounds uh, in three minutes is uh, pretty good. <laughs> Doing a nice job. Okay, Dyer working the ball outside for Katahdin to Terry Craig. Goes in along the baseline, puts it up and in, and it's 10 to 7. Nice drive that time. Clark got caught out, out front and uh, just got beaten to the baseline. Melanie Clark gets it up to Story Shaw. Coming down quickly now, bringing it back out to set things up in the corner. Angela Allen, Clark coming by, goes in the paint, draws the foul. Uh, oh, double, no, dribble. double dribble. Again, these teams uh, split on the season. And so this is bound to be a good game. We 
hope at least the rubber match between these teams. Dubs puts it up and off, and Clark comes away with a rebound. Central Rustic goes down quickly, up and off by Shaw, rebound to Stubbs, and she travels. Get caught up in traffic that time, but again, that's another rebound. Continues to go up and pull down those rebounds. Stubbs, 5'8", senior. The Panthers put the ball in play underneath their own basket. Allen gets it into Story Shaw, drives through a crowd, puts it up, missing. Stubbs with the rebound. Right place at the right Quick time. Outlet. Great passing that time by Gatton. Quick outlet pass. Terry Craig with the basket. Green now they get it back. Joe Shaw coming down on the fast break now. Gets the roll. So it's 12 to 9, Central Aristic. In the corner, a long shot is up by Heather Smith. Story Shaw down court to Allen, inside to Melanie Clark, goes underneath, puts it up and off. Well, and picks up the foul. Stubbs with a rebound again, and drawing the foul. So there are three team fouls on the Cougars. The first one on, three team fouls on Central Rustic, and that's the first one on Melanie Clark. This is Kelly Stubbs with it in the lane. Smith. Back out to Jamie Dyer. And to Smith with a spin around. Rebound coming down and Stubbs is in there battling for just about every, just about every rebound. Somebody's got to get a body on her and get her out of position there for rebounding. 3-11 remaining in the first period. Story Shaw coming across the midcourt stripe. In the corner. Nice shot for that three. by Angela Allen. Three points. 15 to nine. Central Aristic is on fire early in the game. Inside Smith knocked away by Shaw. And the Cougars will play it in. The Katahdin Cougars in the white uniforms. Black and uh, red trim. It's gonna be a blocking foul on Story Shaw. Jamie Dyer looked to uh, drive along the lane. Four team fouls now on Central Aroostook. First foul on Shaw. Craig inside. Greenlaw shot is up and off. Rebound stubs. Blocked. <laughs> tied up. The arrow going to Central Aroostook. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. That ball got tipped over to her. Angela Allen to Greenlaw. Underneath, oh, nice, nice pass. pass to Clark. Oh, oh good to rebound roll. coming down to Stubbs again. I mean, talk about being in the room. She has a, a sixth sense about where the ball's going to come off the, the rim. Jamie Dyer puts it in. And it's 15 to 11. 2 10 remaining in the first period. The time of day doesn't have much effect on their ability to uh, go up and down the court and uh, light up the scoreboard. Shot from the corner. That's Allen again. Angela Allen. She's so lighting them up this morning. Shooting percentages have got to be pretty good here early in the game. 17-11 with 140 left to go in the first period. This is Stubbs again in the paint, up and in. Through traffic, she had two wow. players in front of her. It's a four-point game now. The key is going to be when she gets the ball, you notice that one dribble she takes. Central Oostick is going to have to collapse on her and try to dig the post in there to, to uh, just to bother her shot. Shaw trying to go between two defenders. Now it's scrambled for on the floor. <laughs> Still scrambled. And we've got a tie up. <laughs> Jamie Dyer Good and Chris Bradstreet uh, wrestling for the ball. And the Cougars have the arrow pointing toward their basket. Jamie Dye working the ball out front, gets it into Kelly Stubbs, looking for somebody. Danielle Tucker, number 21, now in the game, and it's lost out of bounds as Heather Smith can't gather it in. 
number, one, number 21, Daniel Tucker, 5'6", uh, junior, in the ball game for the Cougars. The matchup you want to watch inside right now is Bradstreet and Stubbs. Bradstreet's a pretty big girl, and they can post her up against Stubbs. They may be able to draw the foul. That's a great pass from Clark that time into Erica Shaw. Shaw made, the she made a nice cut to the basket that time, Keith. 30 seconds remaining in this opening period of the last D semifinals game. Cougars come back and Tammy Greenlaw scores. It was a 19 to 15 ball game. This is Shaw, Erica Shaw, number 14. No one to pass to. Story Shaw, guarded by Jamie Dyer. Again, there's that cut they wasn't there that time. Melanie Clark. Figure out who to hit there. Coming off by Allen. Bradstreet picking up the name. Oh, at the buzzer. After 1, 21 15. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, 21 15. Pretty good point production, Lisa, for uh, an early morning uh, start in the first period. These, these guys came ready to play. <laughs> I know they were on a bus at around uh, quarter of seven this morning. Headed down to the auditorium, but uh, they don't have any trouble waking up. That's right. 21-15. Second period just underway. Shot missed by Allen. Rebound tipped around. Shaw picks it up. Angela Allen for the Cougars. Back to Shaw. Long three-point attempt off the rim. The rebound to uh, the Cougars. Right. Heather Smith puts it off the glass. Nice job. Good weight by Smith that time. Allowed Shaw to fly by and then just went up for the easy basket. Story Shaw working the ball into four court in the corner. Back to Story Shaw. Losing, uh, knocking it out of bounds are the Cougars. So Angela Allen will play it in along the end line for the Central Rustic Panthers. Coming out deep to Story Shaw. Back to Allen looking inside. Good defense put up right now by Katab, and it's stolen away by Smith going down one on one. Now she loses it back, and we've got it tied up, but the Cougars will um, maintain possession. Tammy Greenlaw will play it in. On the end line, comes out to Kelly Stubbs, drives in, the paint puts up a jump shot, and rebound to Melanie Clark. Of Central Rustic. Two story Shaw, some pressure in backcourt. Now the Cougars back off. Shaw, long pass into the corner to uh, Allen. Back out to Story Shaw. Oh, oh, to Shaw. And here's Smith coming oh, back with it, but double dribbling. Todd playing pretty good defense right now. Stubbs had 10 rebounds in that first game. Uh, nice block by Greenlaw. Coming back with it now, the uh, Cougars, Smith to Stubbs. Brings it out, back out. Angela Cullen's on the game. Wentworth's shot is blocked, and a foul. Kelly Stubbs uh, seemed to always be under the uh, under the rim and came up with 10 rebounds in the uh, first quarter. Bradstreet's going to check out of the game right now. Coming in is uh, number five, Deska Hewitt, a 5'9 sophomore. A glance at the Cougar bench and coach Terry Duffy. <laughs> 21 18 with 6.36 remaining in the half. Tammy Greenlaw. And off, to drive. And stolen back by Katahdin. This is Stubbs looking long, getting it back out front. Jamie Dyer. Craig. A number of uh, girls who can shoot from three point range. And there goes one that's up and off by Craig. Rebound Stubbs, Stubbs up, no good. And throw, throws it in, but uh, can't. Inbounded, steps out of bounds. Panthers will take it back. Story Shaw 
Started by Jamie Donnell in the corner. Goes Angela Allen puts up the soft shot from the corner. She's got the hot hand this morning. 23-18. She had seven in that first quarter. Wentworth moves in but can't hold on. But it's knocked out of bounds by Central Aroostook. So Wentworth will play the ball in along the end line. It's going to be Clark picking up that foul Smith on the moved, trip. Smith moved in along the foul line and tripped over Clark's foot. That's her second foul. Bradstreet will come in and replace her. Central Rustic has six team fouls. Still only one on Katahdin. Number 10. Lisa Ordway checking in. Number 10 of 5'6 uh, sophomore. Long pop is up and off by Terry Craig. Erica Allen. Erica Shaw to Story Shaw. Angela Allen with it, looking inside. She's been hitting from the side very effectively. Now Shaw puts it up and out. 25-18, the lead extended to six. A lot of good outside shooters on the Central Aroostook team. Jamie Dye driving in. Nice drive. Five-point lead now for Central Aroostook. 5-10 remaining in the half. This is Erica Shaw. Allen will pop from the corner. That's a three-point attempt. Missing the mark. And the Cougars down four. Travel. Traveling violation being called on Jamie Dyer. Duska Hewitt, number five, plays it into Shaw. This is Erica Shaw getting a pass from Story Shaw. Bradstreet with it goes between two travel. defenders and travels. Right idea. She tried to split the defenders and go up, but uh, took an extra step. Five-point lead for the Central Aroostook team. Again, these teams split um, on the season. This is the rubber match here this morning. Last key semifinal. Right back up with it. And off is Ordway. Story Shaw. Dog down court by Jamie Dyer. Allen gets it in. Back to Allen for the long one. Erica Shaw has done a nice job on the boards for Central Roostic as well. Not a very big player, but uh, she's getting her share. Erica Shaw takes it back out front. Goes over on the left side now. Hands off to uh, Story Shaw. Back to Erica. They work it around. She goes down to the baseline. Back out to Erica. 3.55. Left and a half, 25-20. Showing good patience working around the top playing pretty good D. There's a shot missing by Dusty Hewitt. And the Cougars come away with it. That is up and off by Stubbs Lisa again. Ordway. Stumps picking up. Oh, I was trying to dump it into rebounds. Greenlaw that time. Greenlaw didn't see it coming. Story Shaw long down court pass is stolen back by Jamie Dyer. Dyer goes hard all the way in, puts it up and off, rebound. It's up and off by Greenlaw, and she draws the foul. Over the back, that's uh, Bradstreet picking up the foul. And that's going to be three on her. Panthers want a timeout right now to talk it over with Coach Julie Bradstreet. So that puts Bradstreet with three fouls. I'm sure she'll be coming out now. As you see, she's getting caught. Behind, she tries to block the shot of Greenlaw right here, reaching over her back. And fouls her. Quite a disparity in the number of fouls committed here this morning. Seven, uh, uh, rather, um, Central Rustic has already put Katahdin in the bonus. A lot of those are off rebounding situations, Keith. You know, uh, Katahdin's really doing a nice job getting the inside position. Both coaches at the beginning of this game felt that uh, rebounding was going to be a key factor in this game. They, uh, both of them wanted to try to control the boards. They felt uh, that would be necessary for their victory. Class D semifinal action all day today here at the Bangor uh, Auditorium. The Central Rustic boys and Katahdin boys go at it after, after this girls' contest. So a lot of 
fans down from Aroostook County, from the Katahdin and Central Aroostook uh, areas. This afternoon, Southern Aroostook girls will play Ashland and a boys game between Woodland and Jonesport Beals. And then it's the B finals tonight, Holton and Ellsworth, John Babst and Rockland. Four point game now, 3.23 to go in this first half. Central Aroostook 25. Tammy Greenlaw missing, but picked up by Stubbs. Back out to Terry Craig, so the Cougars pick up the offensive rebound. Nice Stubbs move. goes in, puts it off the glass. Nice strong move that time. A two-point game now. Again, they're getting that second effort. As the uh, lead of number three, Central Aroostook, begins to dwindle a bit. They raced off to a fast start. Stubbs on the line. Makes it 24. One point ball game with 3-12 remaining in the first half. Some pressure coming in backcourt now from Katahdin. This is Corey Shaw breaking the press and coming into fourth court. Over to Erica Shaw. This is a much smaller Central Aroostook team in right now with both Clark and Bradstreet on the bench in foul trouble. Inside. Got by uh, Greenlaw Gioli is blocked. Greenlaw with a block and Stubbs with a pickup. And she wants it back. Okay, Stubbs goes in the lane, puts it up and off. Again, that's and another a offensive. Traveling violation. May have been a travel there as well, but again, that's another opportunity for Katad. Uh, They're doing a nice job on the boards. Traveling violation on Heather Smith. Gives it back to the Cougars. Trouble getting in the fourth court. Finally, Melanie Clark steps across the midcourt strike. Clark has two fouls. She's come back in now. They need that height on the inside. Corey Shaw giving it to Angela, uh, Angela Allen in the corner. Back out to Erica Shaw. Angela Allen to Erica Shaw. Guarded by Smith. Back to Corey Shaw. The old five. Good defense put up by the Cougars. Inside and ten. Clark's going away by Stubbs. Racing down court, three on two. Dyer missing. Well, she cut the legs right out from underneath Shaw on that one uh, as she was going for the ball. Tammy Greenlaw will play it in. Along the end line. Loose, and it's picked up by Duska Hewitt. Point game now. Knocked out of bounds by Heather Smith. No, they're saying it's touched out by Central Rustic. Gary Craig will play it into Jamie Dyer. Cougars trailing by one. Coming down for it with 1.45 left in the first half. Underneath, shot is up and good by Smith. Heather Smith. So Katahdin takes the lead. We have a foul here. A foul going on Jamie Dyer. So the Cougars take the lead for the first time. And again, that's only their second team foul in the half. So a situation where you might expect the shots with a one and one is just not going to happen for Central. Shaw in the corner. Now it goes in. Fire. Nice pass over to Hewitt. And she's fouled. Good ball movement that time. Hewitt getting the quick pass and drawing the foul. So the 5'9 sophomore who came off the bench will be on the line for two shots. Chance to tie the game again. Allen there. Allen with the rebound, long shot in the corner, making up for the missed foul shots. We haven't heard from her for a while. Remember, uh, especially in that first quarter, she had the hot hand. 105 left. Craig will take the long one. She gets it into stops instead. Now she's open. Two-point attempt. 
Missing. And Shaw racing back down court. Story Shaw to Erica Shaw. Trying to get the handle. Almost lost it back court. Now brings it back. And we have and a travel. Traveling violation on Erica Shaw with 50 seconds remaining. One point ball game. Last D semifinal. Number two, Katad. Number three, Central Arista. Inside Stubbs. Passing back out, but tipped out by Central Arista. Notice that time as she took that dribble, she found uh, two Central Aroostook defenders Tip. on her. Larry Craig intended for Stubbs and tied up. The arrow goes to the Panthers basket. Jessica Hewitt will play it in as the Cougars press. Erica Shaw, Angela Allen, and Hewitt. Now Story Shaw. Allen inside to Clark. She'll move in, gets between two defenders, and travels. Drag that pivot foot. Back the other way with 15 seconds on the clock. Craig looking long. Terry Craig moves inside, can't shoot. Heather Smith back to Craig. And here's the long shot that's up by Daniel Tucker. So we finish out the first half 27 to uh, 26. Very hard fought game for a game played this early in the morning. A good game. We saw some pretty good shooting percentages. Uh, Katahdin really picked up their defensive effort in that second period and uh, slowed Central Aroostook down a little bit. Uh, but as we expected, two close games on the season, and that's what we have here is it's a one-point game at halftime. Again, this is the rubber match because the team teams did split uh, on the season, and we've seen that a number of times in this tournament where outstanding teams have come in with uh, records of... Uh, you know, like 12 and 4, 13 and, and 5 is Central Aroostook's record. And uh, a lot of these girls' teams have played during the season, and they meet with a rubber match here at the Eastern Bay Tournament. And it's an interesting morning for fans of both schools because the boys' team, teams from Katahdin and Central Aroostook, will battle after this girls' contest. You look at the Cougar cheerleaders on the court. Bringing you uh, up to date yesterday in Class C semifinal action. Skank defeated East Corinth in a girls' contest, 46 to 40 in overtime. Then the um, Limestone Boys defeated Skank, six, uh, 99 to 65. It was the Callis Girls, 61, Searsport 57, and the Washington Academy Boys, 88, Narraguegas 65. And we'll be back in a moment. All right, thanks very much. We're here at courtside with uh, Joni Averill of the Bangor Daily News. First of all, Joni, congratulations uh, on your uh, nomination. You were a finalist this year for Maine Sports Writer of the Year. Thank you very much. Very well deserved. Won again by Mike Dowd. He's one of the best around, and I'm really pleased and happy for him. Now, do they retire that after a while and just say, Mike, you Gee, can't I don't win know. anymore? <laughs> Mike will probably keep winning. I hope so. Joni, this is the uh, 19th edition of the Schoolgirl Basketball Tournament. Been going since 1975, and uh, you've been covering. Almost all of these. 79, 80. I've been here most of them, but not, not the first. Well, girls basketball in the state of Maine has come so far since the days of when the tournament was played over at Brewer High School and <laughs> spread at some of the smaller venues. What are some of the big changes that you've seen over the years? Well, I think the way that you really notice what has changed is the way the kids are going on to college. It used to be that if you played high school basketball, you would just sort of automatically and go on and play college ball. But now you're competing for a spot and you're being recruited. That shows you how much the game has improved. I think another indication is if you just look at the score of this game, 26-27 at halftime with these kids, they're really playing a full court, hard pressing, hard driving game. And I really love to see, and I'm going to say it, and I may get a lot of letters and calls, man-to-man -man defense. It's a it's better than saying girl to girl or boy to boy, but I like to see the one-on-one, -on -one, and I think it's wonderful that the girls are doing that today. Well, the skills have improved so much. Uh, players are a lot stronger than they used to be. When you watch some of the things that the girls uh, at the Class D level right on up through are doing, uh, it's amazing how far it's come in a relatively short period of time. 
and I think what they're doing is they're probably a lot of the girls today now are dedicating themselves more to one sport or two sports that was true with swimming and track in years past but I think now the kids are realizing hey you know there's an opportunity for me to go on and get a college degree with a scholarship on the division two three and one level and the kids are really working hard and I think they're really specializing more but I just loved love the way they're playing the game now I when I was playing, I didn't play long. I cheered instead because it was more activity. We used to take two steps and stop, and you couldn't dribble any more than that. So I'm very happy to see the kids going up and down the court. They're really doing great. Let me put you on the spot a little bit, but you can avoid it if you want to. Uh, a lot of talk about Cindy Blodgett of Lawrence. In your opinion, is she the best schoolgirl player ever in the state of Maine? I would have to probably say not the best schoolgirl play, player ever. I would say one of the best. There have been some really, really great players. And I, when I look back over the years, you know, there are a lot that stick out in my mind. There are some from other Class A schools in other parts of the state, and there are some from Class B schools. Cindy's one of the best. I would hesitate, I guess, at this point to say the best. We had one in the paper today in uh, one of your uh, little trivia bits, uh, Lisa Blaze, who a lot of people have right forgotten about her don't mention in the same breath but a tremendously talented player who went on to play for a national championship team at Old Dominion and I think a lot of people forget about Maine's own Joanne Palumbo she was a 1500 point scorer as a junior in Brunswick and she was a great player too and one of the things I've learned in this business and I'm sure you've learned too you never say the best the first the last the anything you say one of perhaps or whatever but if we say the best we, we could have a real problem with that well, Joni we thank you very much uh, for spending some time with us today uh, among the many reporters covering this tournament and uh, you add a unique perspective to it because you, you really are in a sense a historian of the women's tournament having covered it for so long. I've enjoyed being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Joni Averill of the Bangor Daily News. Halftime of the Class D semifinals and let's go back to the table now with Keith and Lisa. Okay, thanks Rich. Uh, when we take a look at the scoring here some uh, interesting things stand out on both teams as we expected a uh, very evenly matched contest here and very evenly matched in the scoring. For Katahdin, Kelly Stubbs led the way with uh, 10 points. Coming in with four points apiece were the rest of the uh, Katahdin team. Heather Smith had four, Tammy Greenlaw had four, Terry Craig had four, and Jamie Dyer had four. For a total of 26. For Central Aroostook, it was Angela Allen with a hot hand. She had 11, and the rest of their players contributed four. Uh, Story Shaw with four, Erica Shaw four, Melanie Clark, four, and Chris Bradstreet, four, for their 27. Looking at the percentages, Central Aroostook, as we said, really uh, shot well in that first half, 46% from the floor. Katahdin was 29%. In the free throw department, uh, Central Aroostook missed both their attempts. Katahdin was four for seven, 57%. And uh, quite a few turnovers on each side. Central Aroostook uh, with 11, Katahdin with 10. Okay, and I guess uh, the difference was that real fast start for Central Aroostook uh, in terms of field goal percentages. They were really hot in the first period. Yes, and, and again, that second effort by uh, by Katad getting the offensive boards has allowed them in, uh, the opportunity to uh, score a little bit more. So at halftime score, Central Aroostook 27, Katad 26. We'll be back to the Bangor Auditorium in just a moment. Final action from the Bangor Auditorium, girls class D semifinals. Number two, Katahdin against number three, Central Aroostook. Uh, Katahdin had the rebounding edge throughout the first half. Lisa, 23 rebounds to Central Aroostook's 16. They had the uh, the edge uh, foul shooting, but Central Aroostook had the uh, higher field goal percentage. In fact, Allen had uh, the five for 11 or 11 points. The, uh, in the first half. Underway with the Cougars bringing the ball in. A one point ball game, 27 to 26. Jamie Dyer is down inside, fakes, puts it up, and in. Good move that time by Jamie Dyer. Excellent move. She brought the ball to the left and then brought it back to the right. Coach Terry Duffy was telling me that uh, they wanted to just try to stay close in that first half, avoid foul trouble, and then maybe turn up the heat defensively. We saw a nice move uh, lay in by Melanie Clark right there. So expect a little bit more defensive pressure by Katahdin in the second half. 29, 28, still a one point game. Central Rustic with the lead. Craig puts it up, partially blocked, gets the rebound, puts it back up and in. 
the offensive board. Good second effort by Craig as we look at the Central Aristic bench. Coach Julie Bradstreet, who was one of the most outstanding players ever to come out of Central Aristic, uh, went way over a thousand points in her career. Erica Shaw. Melanie Clark moves in, had room, but uh, she was too far underneath the basket that time. She made her uh, pivot down low and found herself on the wrong side of the backboard. Sort of handed the ball to uh, a Cougar. Inside the shot was up and off. That time, Greenlaw. Erica Shaw got the inside position on Kelly Stubbs that time, and uh, she picked up, I think it's only her first foul. Second foul. Bradstreet to Clark, pressuring backcourt. Shaw, Story Shaw with it. Eric Shaw. Bottled up there, double team, gets it to Story Shaw, drives nice down the pass. lane, passes off to Bradstreet, and puts it in. That's good great. heads up basketball. Great pass and great finish, finish by Bradstreet. Pressured out front, found room inside. Intended for Stubbs, stolen away by Clark. Story Shaw will do the ball handling coming across the midcourt stripe. Allen looking long. Rebound coming down Central Aristic. Terry Craig to Jamie Dyer. Dyer stopping the foul line. Inside and up. And off was Tammy Greenlaw and a foul. Looks like they're going to call that on Bradstreet, and if it is, that's going to be number four on her, so she'll quickly go to the bench. Greenlaw tried to slice her way through the defense. Tough break for Greenlaw, uh, for Bradstreet on that one, as we take a look. Momentum carried her in. Coming in is Hewitt. Greenlaw on the line for a pair. Ties it up at 31. 5 9. Senior, center. Second one missing. Stubbs goes back up with the rebound. Now Clark hands it to Shaw. 5 25. Story Shaw. Corner to Erica Shaw starts to go in. A steal by Stubbs, but knocks the ball out of bounds. So Dusky Hewitt will play it in for the Cougars. To Shaw, 5-15, left in the third period. Inside, Melanie Clark. Angela Allen will take the three-point attempt again. Chip by Dusky Hewitt. Both Ball. teams really battling on the boards now. Terry Craig will play it into Jamie Dyer. And the Cougars bring it back down court. Five minutes in the third period. Craig goes left. Back out to Dyer, guarded by Story Shaw. Shaw goes out, almost picks up the steal. Now Kelly Stubbs has it, guarded by Eric Shaw. Goes side of the foul line, puts it up and in. Good move by Kelly Stubbs. Nice move in that she pulled up that time. I think Shaw was expecting her to go all the way to the hole and kind of sagged off a little bit. Stubbs pulled up and took the jump shot. Now it's a two-point lead by the Kentucky Cougars. Allen. Inside. Down low. Going through there is Clark. And she's fouled. Central Rustic held the lead through uh, much of the first half. Katahdin battled back, and they lead by two. As Clark puts the first one up for the Central Rustic Panthers. Rebound down to Greenlaw. Jamie Dyer drives down two on two. And Hewitt coming over the back of the rebound that time. Both teams really pushing the ball up the floor. First foul on Hewitt, two team fouls apiece. 
shot is up by Craig missing. Rebound by Shaw. And now Hewitt can't find the handle. She doesn't save it in. Great effort, though. Jamie Dyer. Corey Shaw on her into Stubbs. Stubbs moves. Nice move in there, but missing. And up and in is Greenlaw. It's going to be important for Greenlaw to get involved in that, uh, both the scoring and the rebounding. He, she can really help pick up the inside game for Katahdin. Now a four-point lead for Katahdin, and Central Rivers wants timeout. Again, it's coming down to the boards, and, and as we saw right there, by Green, the good effort, offensive board, put it up and in. And I'm sure that uh, that's one of the things that Coach Julie Bradstreet's going to be discussing with her team. They need to do the job, and, and it's tough right now. They've got Chris Bradstreet out with uh, foul trouble. She's got four fouls on her, and uh, that's going to cut into their rebounding strength. So a timely timeout to slow that spurt by uh, by Katahdin before it uh, blossoms into an eight or 10 point lead. We expected a close match and that's what we've got. It's a four point game now. As we said, when they met on the season, they were three point games both times. And uh, both teams doing a great job today in uh, trying to run their own game plan. They've, uh, as we said, we expected a good one and they're uh, providing one. Referees in this first contest of the day, Rich Nutter and Mike Worcester. Here's Melanie Clark with it. Two-point game again. Long pass. Smith. Up and off. Rebound to Melanie Clark. Gets it up to Angela Allen. Quickly coming down. Now she'll stop and set it up. Story. Shaw to Erica Shaw. Very closely. Here comes Smith. Stubbs. Stubbs coming down, leading the pack. All alone puts it up and in. Beautiful steal. Thought she was going to dunk it. <laughs> Awfully quick. Great steal. Erica Shaw going along the line. Cross court. Allen's open. She'll Whoa. Be a long attempt, but she's bumped here. Stubbs put a shot on her afterwards. Momentum just kept her going. Nothing intentional by any means. Uh, she'd come up knowing that Allen can shoot that shot, came running out to defend it and just couldn't stop. She needs to make sure she gets herself together before she takes this shot. Allen collects herself, puts it up and... In and out. Her team up by four, uh, down by four. 37-33. Remember, and it was a three-point attempt, so she's getting three shots. And it looks like we have a timeout by Katahdin. As Allen will get one more. Again, it's important in that situation. Uh, she did get hit quite hard on that, and uh, she has time to get herself together. Make sure you're ready before you go to the foul line on that, because uh, those are big foul shots right now. Right. Maybe she really didn't do that. It looked like she really hadn't collected her herself before she fired up the first one. Look at the Central Rustic Huddle and Coach Bradstreet. Her first year at the helm after uh, playing at Maine. And at the other end, Terry Duffy and the Katahdin Cougars. 2.54 left in the third period. Angela Allen on for one more. One more shot. Stubbs is out of the game right now for Katahdin. That was her third foul that she picked up there. It's a three-point game. Uh, sounds familiar when you talk about these two teams. Right. It's a chance right here for Central Rustic possibly to gain some ground on Katahdin with Stubbs out of the game. Terry Craig looking for somebody. Gets it to Jamie Dyer. Dyer drives down inside, puts it up partially. It is blocked by uh, Clark. Nice block. And Central Rooster gets Good it back coming down the fast break. Shaw leading the back, puts it up and in. Left handed. 
good awareness that time by Erica Shaw to get the ball two story. Jamie Dyer to Craig looking inside back to Jamie Dyer. Travel. She travels. Coach Terry Duffy wants his team to settle down a little bit. Dusky Hewitt plays it in. The score is Shaw. 2.05 remaining in the third period. Erica Shaw with it. Looking inside, Melanie Clark. Story Shaw's long bomb is off the front of the rim. And Wentworth gathers it in for the Cougars. Gives it over to Craig. Greenlaw did a nice job on the boards that time, uh, especially with Stubbs out. She's going to have to pick up the slack. Smith moves in, but Another she's called travel. for traveling. <laughs> As I said, with Stubbs out, she's getting ready to come back in right now. And she's going to replace Terry Craig. 140 left in period number three. I'll try that's the Smith that went out. One point lead for the Cougars. Melanie Clark looking inside. Spins, goes along the baseline, bounces to Allen. Nice shot. She's done a real nice job for them offensively today. Angela Allen makes it 38-37. Down low intended for Stubbs and tied up. And the Panthers get the ball back. with a one-point lead. Corey Shaw. Over the top to Clark. Oh, she didn't need that dribble. Didn't keep the ball high enough, and it's not. She brought it down for that one more dribble, which put her underneath the basket. I don't think she really uh, knew where she was on that great entry pass. Knocked away by Greenlaw. Can't leave her alone. Allen's shot misses. Now Stubbs racing down court for Katahdin. And Clark bumps into Dyer. Central Rooster comes back. Clark with it. Now they'll set it up. Story Shaw will take the long ball. Three. Four three. Forty-one thirty-seven. Jamie Dyer to Terry Craig. Blocked by Clark. Nicely by Clark. Now Gets the ball Story to Shaw. Shaw coming down, putting it up and on. Dyer quickly back the other way. Jamie Dyer will take it all the way in. Bumping in the clock, losing the ball out of bounds. And Central Rooster gets it back. Central Rooster fans are up on their feet right now, uh, sensing the shift in momentum. They've gone up by four, and they have the ball with 11 seconds to go in this third period. Dusky Hewitt plays it in. The score is shot, nine seconds in the period. Inside Clark. I think she knows how much time's left, but this could be a big one. Three. Three. Oh, number three at the gun. 42, a uh, 44, 37. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, we've seen a scoring spurt here by the Central Arusta Panthers, and they've moved out to a 44-37 point lead, and the fourth and final period is just underway. Back the other way for two, 44-39. Central Arusta in that uh, third quarter went on an 11-0 run uh, to end it, and Katahdin lost the ball the last eight times they had it. So uh, that's a definite change of momentum. Look out for Shaw. She's open again for another three. Oh boy, she is on fire. She's hit three threes in the last couple minutes. Light them up. 47-39. Stubbs jump shot from the foul line is off the rim. The rebound put back up and yeah. in by Greenlaw. Good job by Greenlaw that time on the board. Big basket right there for Greenlaw, 47-41. Well, those three-point uh, shots were really... They're sticking to hurry like glue now. Extend the lead in a hurry. 
remember Allen's a pretty good shooter and now they go inside to Clark who kicks it back out to Allen for three off the rim the rebound coming down to Greenlaw quickly back come the Cougars Craig inside the stuff good job that time Katad now starting to answer a little bit Cougars keeping it close here 47 43 635 left in the game Erica Shaw in the corner. Melanie Clark working on Greenlaw. Can't get through. Inside now, Shaw puts it up and off. Rebound, Stubbs, and a foul. I believe that's going to go on, on Story Shaw or possibly Hewitt. Forty-seven, forty-three. Going on Story Shaw. She's got two. Both teams with t uh, with three team fouls. Bagioli back in the lineup, number 12 for Central Rooster. And foul call on Melanie Clark. Melanie well, sitting on the floor uh, saying how'd that happen? Four team fouls on Central Aristic and three on Katahdin. That could be a turn factor late, later in the game. Ball was not tipped, so Central Aristic will get it back at the end court. Neither team going into the bonus for a while yet. But maybe in a couple minutes that could tell a big story. This is Story oh, Shaw nobody picked going her up. down. Up and in, left-handed. Nobody stopped the ball that time. Saw her chance to really go and beat the defense, and she put it in. This is Craig inside. Greenlaw spins, puts it up off the glass. Rebound coming down. Up and off. It's stuck Smith. over the back, I believe. Ball. And that's going to be number four, I think, on Stubbs. So that's going to be with 546. She's now playing with four fouls. 14 fouls on each team. Baggioli. And stolen back. Craig puts it up and off. And lost out of bounds. As Jamie Dyer stepped out of bounds. Pressure now, real intense pressure coming from the Cougars. Clark. Baggioli. Back to Clark. And a traveling violation calling Melanie Clark as she tried to come across the midcourt stripe. Being ready to come in is uh, Angela Collins. She's going to replace, I think, Stubbs right now. They, as we said, 5.29 to go in this game, and she's got four. They can't afford to lose her. And Fagioli goes back out to Central Wisdom. Craig inside. Greenlaw's jump shot from the lane. Greenlaw is having a good second half right now. 49-45, stolen back, and now stolen back again by Central Wilson. Now stolen again by Katad, now stolen back by Central Wilson. Well, they're getting the breaks there now. It's Shaw <laughs> all alone on the layup. Uh, just a loose ball got about knocked four, in the right direction. About four back-to-back -back turnovers there. 51-45. to 45. Kelly Stubbs is going to be coming back in. Uh, they can't afford to have her pick up her fifth foul, but they also can't afford to have her on the bench. There's another steal. Oh, nice. And now it's taken back by Katahdin, and we've got a whistle. I believe they're going to call her out of bounds. Stubbs coming back in. Boy, they're really racing up and down court right now. Jamie Dyer will play it in for Katahdin. And they have a six-point lead. Uh, but down by six to Todd. And the stubs, they need to get the points on the board here. That's going to be a traveling trap. violation being called in Wentworth. Bradstreet will play it in. Central Rustic as Katahdin brings pressure in backcourt. It's been paying off for them the last few moments. Clark gets it to Erica Shaw. Oh, Stolen. big steal. Dyer shot is up and off. Bradstreet with the rebound. Being pressured in backcourt. Gets it down, but into the hands of Greenlaw. So turnover after turnover here in the last few minutes. 
And the timeout. Good call right by, there. Uh, the Cougars. Somebody needs to settle this thing down a little bit. As you said, Keith, it's been one turnover after another. And uh, right at this point, it's uh, it's to, to Central Roostics benefit because they still have the lead. We'd like to remind you that if you're enjoying our telecasts, our coverage of this year's high school basketball tournament from the Bangor Auditorium, we hope you will let us know. Drop us a card, send it to basketball, Maine Public Television, 1450 Lisbon Street, Lewiston, Maine, 04240. That's a basketball, Maine Public Television, 1450 Lisbon Street, Lewiston, Maine, 04240. We'd like to hear from you. And we thank you in advance for uh, dropping us a card. Again, as we said, it's been working to uh, Central Aroostics' advantage right now because uh, it's been one turnover for one team, one for the next, and uh, all that's happening there is time is running off the clock, and Central Aroostics still has this six-point lead. So a good time out by Terry Duffy to settle down his team and uh, start working on some offense. Okay, here's Dyer's shot. Out, rebound the clock. This is the rubber match, number three, Central Rustic, number two, Katahdin High School. And a foul called on Jamie Dyer. The teams split on the season. It's her third. Again, still not in the bonus. Story Shaw almost stolen by Jamie Dyer. Gets it back to Erica Shaw now, number 14. Goes inside underneath the park. A good strong and draws the foul. And who's going to pick up that one? It looks like uh, looks like Craig might be picking that up. Only her first foul. So from here on out, uh, Central Roostick will be in the bonus. And Clark nails the first of her two shots. Central Rustic, meanwhile, has only four team fouls. But it could be a telling factor in the final three minutes and 45 seconds here. 52-45. From the corner, Allen shot. And Craig coming away with it. Terry Craig. Smith. Back outside, picked up by Jamie Dyer. Guarded by Shaw. Over to Craig. The trail by seven. Shot is up by Wentworth. Stubbs. Shot partially blocked. Tipped high. Picked up by Story Shaw. Fast break. Going back. Stubbs okay. now it's back again to Central Roostick. Stubbs is very close to picking up a foul right there. Shaw. Eric Shaw back to Story Shaw. She knows she's going to be careful. We'll see how that affects her aggressiveness as far as the boards go. Jamie Dyer being called for the foul. So Central Arista continues to be in the driver's seat. Now they go to the to the foul line. 257 remaining. This time it'll be Erica Shaw going on the line. And they will be on in the one and one. They have a few fouls to give themselves. So won't be going to the line for a while yet. And it's well in hand right now, at least. The Central District, 54 to 45. Cougars got to get something rolling here. Crowd missing by Smith. Craig up. Rebound to Bradstreet. And the Shaws will bring it down court. Being pressed, and now there's a Pass that goes astray and it's tied up. Central, uh, the and Cougars will get the ball down. back. Jamie Dyer will play it in for Katahdin. Stubbs. And the gun sounds for what reason? Could be a problem with the arrow. We'll check. Looks like it's a problem with the possession arrow. And so well, the they stopped the game and turned the arrow the other way, and now uh, Central Rooster gets it back. 
and Corey Shaw is tripped up by Jamie Dyer. And that's either going to be. That's it. That's it for Dyer. Central Aristic uh, team coming down to tell Dyer what a good game she played. She did. She played some good defense. Central Aristic fans begin to uh, stir behind us, sensing uh, it has to be termed an upset in terms of the standings. Although the teams did split on the season. I was going to say, it's really only in standings, uh, as we said. Right. A split, uh, very even teams. And right now, the foul line is paying off as Central Rustic is in the bonus, and uh, Katahdin's going to take their final time out. With 2.35, uh, Central Rustic has extended this to a 10 point lead. And it's going to be up to Katahdin to really, uh, if they're going to make a run for it, they've got to do it right now because time's running out. Only 14 fouls for Central Aroostook, so they've got a couple to give before, uh, before Katahdin will go on the line. Central Aroostook went on that real spurt when uh, Shaw hit two or three three-pointers. That really... Um, Put yeah. them in command of the game. Again, it was right at the end of that third quarter. They won on, on an 11 nothing run. And Katahdin had those eight turnovers in a row. And that really uh, turned this game around. 2.35 left, and one of these teams will be advancing to the Eastern Maine final, Class D, to be played on Saturday afternoon. 56-45. Two thirty-five remaining in the ball game. Stubbs gets it back, puts it up and off. Rebound tipped high right now. Central Rustic is also commanding, uh, taking command of the boards. And Melanie Clark seems to be everywhere now when it comes to rebounds. Stubbs was getting a lot of them in the first half, but well, not she, as many here. She's also going to play a little bit more carefully right, right. now with four fouls. Although it's coming down at crunch time, she's going to have to do whatever it takes. Shot was missed by Tucker. Stubbs gets it out front. Now it's almost stolen from her, and we'll see a foul being committed by Erica Shaw. But again, no bonus yet. Danielle Tucker will play it in for the Cougars. Started closely by Erica Shaw, gets it in to Stubbs. She'll spin in the lane, put it up, and gets the road. I think everybody in the building knew who that ball was going to. They're going to go to Stubbs a lot in the final two minutes. Full court pressure. It's hard right now for uh, Central Rooster to get the ball in. And it's going to be a turnover to Todden with a chance here to uh, cut this lead. Nine point lead now. Inside, Stubbs will take it in, loses the ball. Craig picks it up, picks it up, puts it up, no good. There's Greenlaw. Greenlaw, tipped high, foul being called on who? Greenlaw? I think that may go on Greenlaw going over the back. Yes, it is, and that uh, here's the difference right now. That's going to send Central Rustic to the line. That has been a big factor in this uh, final period. Todd is still not in the bonus situation with only 155 54 to go in the ball game. And 5 7 sophomore Chris Bradstreet goes on the line. <laughs> High off the rim and down through. A little balancing act there by Bradstreet. She wanted to make sure she didn't go over the line. So things are going well for Central Rustic. Rebound down up by Shaw. Stubbs quickly will take it down. Bring it all the way down by herself. Nice Underneath. Team. Up and in by Smith. Good pass from Stubbs to Smith. Clark with it for Central Rustic. Down court, That's stolen back. And a foul as Angela Allen. I think. Uh, Central Rustic's probably going to want a timeout right now as uh, they're having difficulty against this pressure. 
And uh, Erica Shaw seems to be limping on her way over to the bench. But Katahdin has turned on the heat again. It's an eight point game. Winner of this one will play the winner of the Southern Aroostook Ashland game, which will get underway today at 2.05. The boys contest following this one between the Katahdin boys and the Central Aroostook boys. Right now you're looking into the Central Aroostook huddle with coach Julie Bradstreet. Telling them to uh, be very cautious. 57-49. That's not a good timeout right there. We saw earlier Terry Duffy uh, take a timeout to settle his uh, settle his troops down, and that's what uh, Bradstreet is doing right now with her girls. They're in the driver's seat, but they can't afford to be turning the ball over. A minute 34 to go. They have an eight-point lead. They just need to protect the ball. Comes into Stubbs. Really worked hard in this game. Now she travels. Bradstreet will play it in for the Panthers. 57-49. Bradstreet gets it back. Down to Melanie Clark. 120 on the clock. Angela Allen. Bradstreet back to Shaw. They're going to work it around. They just wanna, as we said, they don't need to score. They need to protect the ball. And you're going to see some fouls here. A foul being committed by Allen, I believe. It's going to be on Smith. Heather Smith committing the foul, number 20. And Allen will go on the line. The lead is extended to nine points. A lot of good perimeter shooting by the Panthers this afternoon. Again, it's a 10 point lead. And we had a sub. Trying to get a substitute into the game. Uh, I'm not sure if they were there in time, but they are going to bring her in. Smith goes out. Collins comes back in. Ten point lead now for Central Aroostook with 108 to go. Cougars bring it back. Jamie to the Terry Craig. Green law back to Craig. would like to fire long at a few uh, three pointers up there if they can. Stubbs from the lane. She's tough. She really is. It's an eight-point game, 53 seconds. And all alone is Eric Shaw draws the foul. And that foul is going to be have to see who that's on. Playing it on. Uh, Looked like it was uh, Danielle Tucker, but they, they've uh, given it to Cullen. Collins, according to the scoreboard, but Danielle Tucker was the player who looked like she picked it up. Sixty to fifty-one, Central Rustic leading. Forty-two seconds remaining in the ball game. Greenlaw's Green -law. nice shot just inside the three-point line. Melanie Clark, Erica Shaw. Break that press. They do, but the foul and that's going to be it. I believe for Stubbs. She should get a nice round of applause from both sides. Played a great game. Coming over, trying to go for the steal. Picked up the foul. 28 seconds to go, a seven point lead. Allen on the line to extend it. 61 53 as Angela Allen connects from the foul line. Sixty-two, fifty-three, twenty-seven seconds. Looking like Central Rustic will advance to the Eastern Main Final. The number three team knocking off the number two team here. Twenty seconds. Central Rustic gets it back, and a foul being committed on Greenlaw by Greenlaw. So 
will coach uh, Brian Street her first year at the helm. will take the team to the Eastern Maine final. Well, these kids have been around for a while. Clark and the Shaws out front. Uh, we've seen them here year after year. Collins. Terry Craig takes the long one. Good for three. 62-56, but there's only five seconds on the clock. And a foul being committed with three seconds on the clock. We'll go back down the other end of the court. Seven point lead. And the victory coming up here for Central Aroostook. Todd and Boys and the Central Aroostook Boys will play after this game. Three, fifty-six. Good coaching move right here. They've pulled all the uh, Central Aroostook players back off the lanes. They don't need to be picking up any fouls and delaying this game any longer. Five-three senior pokes it in. There goes the gun. Sixty-four, fifty-six. Central Aroostook will go on to the Eastern Main Class D final. Good game by both teams. Again, that the turning point in this game, you'd have to say, came at the end of that third quarter when Central Roostick won on the 11-0 run. And uh, Katahdin, Katahdin had eight straight turnovers, and uh, that really turned this around, and it was just an uphill battle for them at that point, but a great matchup. Two very talented teams. So the Panthers of Central, Central Roostick High School will play in the Eastern Maine D final. Coming your way Saturday afternoon at 1.35. They will play the winner of this afternoon's game between Southern Aroostook, number one, and number four, Ashland. The, uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Funding for Maine Public Television's basketball coverage is provided by McDonald's Restaurants of Maine and Eastern New Hampshire. By Grant's Dairy, committed to being a good neighbor since 1902. And by Husson College, offering master's, baccalaureate, and associate degrees in business, health, and professional studies. Okay, back now at the auditorium. We want to take a look at the scoring uh, for Katahdin. They were led by Kelly Stubbs, a great effort today. Uh, she had 20 points, followed by Tammy Greenlaw, who really stepped it up in the uh, second half. She had 15, Terry Craig had nine, and coming in with six apiece were Heather Smith and Jamie Dyer for their total of 56 points. For Central Aroostook, Story Shaw really came on. Uh, she hit three threes in the second half. She had a total of 23 points, uh, followed by Angela Allen, she had 18. Melanie Clark had 10, Chris Bradstreet had seven, and Erica Shaw had six. So uh, everybody getting in the scoring action, and uh, the difference were the threes by Story Shaw uh, late in that third period. Okay, it was number three over number two. They had split on the season, had some very close games, and another really good game today, but a little too much firepower this morning by Central Aroostook. They came in seated number three, Knocked off Machias in the opening round contest, 48-41, and defeated Katahdin here this afternoon, 64 to uh, 56. And we'll go now to Rich Kimball. Rich? Thanks very much, Keith, and we're here with Story Shaw. Story, uh, you guys had played them twice during the season. You uh, knew what they do, and in the second half, you guys really took control. Yeah. At halftime, Julie told us, you know, our coach, she said, we've got to, we know what to do, we know what to expect, so we've got to stop them, and we get out there, we knew Kelly Stubbs is their key to the, their team, and we get out there and stop them, we did what we had to do. We wanted it, we wanted it bad. Well, you really turned it up a notch yourself. I think four in the first half, but you had 19 points in the second half. Oh, I, I, I wanted to win so bad, and I knew. She told us that if we are, we're a good team, and we got to pick it up two notches, because they, they always pick it up a notch, because Tarn's a really tough team. And uh, I, I knew I wanted it, and I said, it's time to get out there and do it. So, 
what it did. Now, last year you guys lost in the semifinals. Yes. Uh, did that make you want this even more this uh, year? Yes, because every year we keep saying, I mean, you know, we're a good team and stuff, but we, we kept saying, well, there's always next year, there's always next year. And for us seniors, there isn't another year. And we said this is our year, so we're hopefully going to do it. Story, great job today. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck Thank tomorrow much. in the finals. Thank you. Story Shaw, 23 points as Central Aroostook earns a berth in the Class D finals tomorrow here at the Bangor Auditorium.